just been hosting a summit which is all about reducing food waste. Now, in Italy, in France, they penalise companies, supermarkets, who waste food. Is there a case for doing that here? There absolutely is. I think we need to do much more to tackle food waste. The amount of food that we waste is both an environmental but also a moral scandal. Um, when we produce so much food, we inevitably mean that uh, land, water and other resources are being used in a way which is, uh, to my mind, wasteful and spendthrift of the Earth's resources. We need to be far more careful in using these resources. But it's also the case in this country that there are tons hundreds of thousands of tons of edible food which could be distributed to those in need which has not been distributed which is why we've announced today that we're spending five million pounds in additional money in order to ensure that we can help companies that want to ensure that the very poorest in our society get that food that's an incentive but if necessary in the future then perhaps penalties might be required as well so just to be clear you're looking at carrots at the moment but the stick of fines for companies that waste food is something you're considering we're absolutely looking at carrots we're looking at incentives but it is also the case that we want companies to measure and we will monitor their performance and of course if necessary in the future we'll take appropriate action now there's quite a lot else going on in the world your colleagues want the Prime Minister to set an all-weather timetable decoupled from Brexit for her departure. Is that the right thing for her to do? I think the right thing for the Prime Minister to do is to concentrate on getting Brexit over the line. Uh, the talks in which I'm playing a small part with the Labour Party are a way of trying to ensure that we can have a majority in the House of Commons that will ensure that we can get the withdrawal agreement passed. The Prime Minister has very graciously said that when that moment comes that she will stand down and that she will allow another Conservative leader to take the country through the next phase of Brexit. Uh, I think that we should honour the Prime Minister's commitment and more importantly all of us should recognise that it's in our, uh, our national interest um, and it's our own responsibility as elected members of Parliament to get Brexit over the line. So to be clear you would urge the trade union of Tory MPs, the 22 committee, to drop its demand for her to set a timetable for her departure. I'd never give any instructions to backbench colleagues, certainly not, but my own view is that the Prime Minister has been clear that if Brexit is uh, delivered, if we get the withdrawal agreement over the line, she will then stand down. And I think the most important thing at the moment is that we do that. The most important thing, and certainly events over the course of the last few weeks only reinforce this in my mind, is to ensure that we leave the European Union in an orderly way. Your friend George Osborne says the Cabinet, you, need to put pressure on her to name a departure date. You're saying he's wrong. Um, on this rare occasion, George is wrong, yes. And I have huge respect for George, what he achieved as Chancellor of the Exchequer, and also the brilliant newspaper that he edits at the moment. But from time to time, uh, we, we do disagree. Now, you are taking part in these talks with Labour. They've been going on for five weeks. Mm. At what point does the government decide they're not going to succeed? Well, quite a lot of effort's gone on, uh, gone in rather, I should say, on both sides, from both Labour and Conservatives in these talks, um, and they have been cordial, constructive and serious, but there are big issues on both sides, and one of the things that I respect is the need for the Labour leadership to feel that they can take their members with them. Um, and of course there are several issues which the Labour leadership are wrestling with, and I think it is only fair that I respect both the integrity of the talks process, but also the need for the Labour Party to make its own mind up on these questions before attempting to, to set an arbitrary date on where the talks should end. So just to be clear, some of your colleagues don't believe it's remotely possible for these to have a successful outcome. I, of course there are people who are sceptical and I can understand why. And of course there are certain principal positions uh, which the government absolutely will not give in on. Uh, but it is possible that uh, uh, we can better understand each other's positions and it is possible that we can get an agreement which will allow Labour MPs to feel that they can support the withdrawal agreement. Um, and in the interest of making sure that we do leave, I think it is worth having this, these talks. And certainly it seems to me that the public understand that if you reach out beyond your own party from time to time in the national interest that that can be a worthwhile thing to do okay but on the question of red lines Labour Party is absolutely clear that there will be no deal unless the government is prepared to give a commitment to permanent membership of the customs union 
is it conceivable you can make that offer to the Labour Party? I, I think, to be fair to the talks process, I have to respect the confidences of what's said inside it. And I understand why you characterise Labour's position in that way, uh, but actually the talks are more fluid and more complex than that characterisation um, uh, uh, accurately conveys. So it's not a criticism of, of your journalism or your commentary, it's just uh, uh, in talks, People put forward propositions, put forward positions, they are tested. In the end, nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. It may well be that either Labour or the government say, I'm terribly sorry, there is not a deal here to be done. Mm. But at the moment, the process of exploring different positions is going on, and that's what you would expect to happen in any negotiation. All right, but then if, if that is not a completely accurate depiction of Labour's position, most people, like myself, have said, that it is an absolute red line for the Prime Minister that the government can't commit to a customs union that would make it impossible to do trade deals with third countries. Is that a fair characterisation? Sorry, is that a fair characterisation? of the government's position. I entirely understand why you're characterising the government's position in that way, um, uh, but what I won't do is, um, is provide a running commentary on what's going on in the talks. So yes, that is government policy. I'm not going to provide a commentary on the talks.